Good morning, church. How are you today? So great to be with you here for Online Church. And who knows, the presence of God is with you right now. Come on, let's just open our hearts. Let's lean in. Let's be expectant. I don't know about you, but I haven't come to sing songs. I need to have an encounter with Jesus. So come on, here we go. Let's open our hearts right now. Let's put our hands together. Come on, let's sing this out together. Your strength is rising on the inside. Faith is growing your word alive. My fears are fading with you here. Jesus, I'm giving you all I have. No, I believe in you. Nothing is impossible for you. Says I pray, Jesus, take over the line, line. And I believe in you. Nothing is impossible for you. Come on, let's sing it out together right now. Cause you have made a way. Nothing is impossible for you. Oh, oh, oh. And I believe in you. Nothing is impossible. we're facing right now, God, that can topple you. God, you are greater. So you are higher. So you are bigger. God, nothing can stop you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we're drawing near today. Oh, we're drawing near. I'm drawing near, Lord. Oh, I just want to be close to you, Lord. I just want to be close to you. Oh, sing song. Stay still and patient. Wonder. He made 
Well, hello church. I hope you're doing well. Welcome to the service. Um, today, my name's Sats. My wife, Em, and I, we're the lead pastors here at C3 Reflect, and you are joining us for online church. Let me just say really quickly, if you're new or you're just getting connected, make sure you hit subscribe right now on YouTube or head to our website, c3reflect.church. Um, you can go connect with us there. Give us your details. Get connected. Let's start a conversation. Um, life is too good to be lived alone and online church is an amazing expression an amazing tool for us to be able to connect but there's something about being in the room something about community that needs to be lived out kind of on a, a you know like a communal level <laughs> at a personal level so i would love to invite you to find out more about us and all of that jazz and today we are um, heading into our second week of our series on minimalism i hope you've enjoyed um everything so far and we've We've just been talking about this idea of uh, getting rid of the things that are unnecessary and peripheral and distracting and the excess noise and stuff that nobody really wants to have so that we can have space for the things that really matter. And of course, in this case, we're talking about following Jesus, that when my life gets too busy or too full, normally it's the things like prayer and the practices and the presence of Jesus that slip away from my life. And I, I know that we live in a noisy world. And uh, so today we're talking about digital detox because I believe um, one of the, the tensions or problems or things to navigate in our, in our world today is the digital world. And um, I think it's worthy of maybe more than just one message, but we'll just go with one uh, for now. But I want to read a scripture just to kind of get us started. And in Romans 12 verse 1 to 2 it says i appeal to you therefore brothers this is paul the apostle speaking to the church in rome it says by the mercies of god to present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable for, to god which is your spiritual worship and let's just pause there for a moment if you don't know what it means to be a disciple of jesus paul is describing it right there he's saying hey you're supposed to be a living sacrifice um present yourself to god submit yourself to god and he wants to take you on this this process that it then describes in the next verse he says do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of god what is good and acceptable and perfect so here's here's the thing being a disciple of jesus is about being formed, transformed, changing the way that we think so that we become like him. Jesus who gave his life on the cross for all of mankind, selfless Jesus, a wonderful Jesus, kind Jesus, loving Jesus, powerful Jesus. And, and, and Jesus is inviting us to follow him, to live the sort of life he lived. Not only just to live and experience it and, uh, uh, for ourselves, but it's actually the, the invitation to be formed, to become like him. The greatest blessing of God is, is not the material blessings, it's not the miracles and signs and wonders. The greatest blessing of God is that we get to be like God. That's, that blows my mind every time I think about it, but that's what discipleship, becoming a disciple of Jesus, what following Jesus is all about. Jesus is inviting you and I to become like him. Who wouldn't want that? And Paul is saying, here's, here's how it works. It's all about the way that you think. If you can renew your thinking, because we live in a fallen world, God created us in his image, perfect, good, and sin came into the world, man's rebellion kind of brought the whole thing down, and now we see what is quite evidently not good as well as good in our world. And, and that's a product of sin. And so Jesus came to deal with sin, to, to, to put an end to that rule of darkness in our world, to bring in a new kingdom. And, and, but not only just to say, oh, okay, now it's done, but now there's this process of us being redeemed. And that's what discipleship is about. It's us being transformed into the new image of Christ. He's the firstborn of many, and we're following in his footsteps. We're learning to become like him, and that's what the church is all about. But here's what you need to understand right now, and, and this is where we come to the digital side of what we're talking about. Not only does Jesus have a vision for your life where you become like him, which is great vision, um, but also the world that we live in, the spirit of this world uh, that is trying to occupy uh, and, and be king of this world, even though it's not, is trying to hang on to the power it once had, is putting up a bit of a fight in our world. And, and that the spirit of that world also wants you to become like it. That's why it says, don't be conformed to this world. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. In, in other words, there are these two things in opposition with each other the spirit of this world and Jesus 
Jesus is trying to help you become like him. The world is trying to uh, make you more like the world. And the thing is, is that the world's motivations are, are not good. Um, you know, the world wants to use you. The world wants to abuse you. The world wants to take advantage of you, to extort from you. So there's really no comparison about which direction we want to go. It's just that we find ourselves in a culture and in an environment where the default is that we are being conformed to be like the world. And Jesus is offering us a different way. And, you know, as we talked about minimalism and in introduced the idea last week, it's not about uh, being a first century sort of hermit and uh, just kind of going off and, and not changing your clothes and <laughs> things like that. Uh, it, no, 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 minimalism, as we understand it through, through the lens of what Jesus says, is about getting rid of the things that are peripheral, that are unnecessary, that that, that distract, that, that detract from our lives, that, that squash the presence and the practices of Jesus. They, they, they make it hard to have space for the things that really matter. Minimalism is about getting rid of those things so that we can focus on the things we really do value. And in this case, we're talking about, of course, what we believe to be the most important thing ever, which is following Jesus being formed in the image of Christ. But there is a fight on from the world. And here's where we come to this conversation. This is where we're now talking about the digital. I, I love technology. I love that we're just sending people to space for fun right now. I, I, I love that. I know some people People think that's wasteful. We should spend it on, on something else. And maybe, but I love that the, the human curiosity and the human desire to innovate and do new things. And, you know, when I think about this device, I think about a device that is full of power. I think about innovation. I think about design. I think about beauty. There's so many wonderful things about this technology that allow us to be connected. We are communicating right now through this sort of technology. And so I am no uh, anti-technology uh, person. I love this stuff. But what I also realize is that this phone is not necessarily designed for my good. This device <laughs> it, it is a portal to all sorts of things that distract, that detract, that are peripheral, unnecessary, and noise. The stuff that, as we're talking about minimalism and following Jesus better, the stuff that we actually don't want in our lives. And so I am aware that this has incredible power, not only for good, but for harm. And if we're not careful, because I, the reason I, I'm on social media and the reason I use phones and the reason I want to interact with the technology of the day is because I want to win people to Jesus. And Jesus actually says, hey, go into all of the world. I believe that the digital space is a space that the church is called into. It's a space I personally feel called into to go and make disciples of Jesus. But it's also true that in, in our search for, for that or simply in just the way that we're living our lives, we can actually find that we become disciples of the world. That in this digital space that we occupy, we can actually find that we too are being formed and conformed to the image of the world. And I really believe that it's time for us as a church to get serious about our devices. Does this device... <laughs> Do you own this device or the, does this device own you? Are you a slave to Christ or are you a slave to your device? Yeah, I know it's catchy. <laughs> it rhymes. Is this the iPhone or is it the iPhone? Because we are actually addicted to this stuff. You know, that moment when you're in bed and the message comes through at 11, 11 p.m. and you think, oh, I just need to check it. Or even that moment when you're driving and the compulsion to check your phone, the notifi notification comes in. Why? Because this is designed to condition you to to want it more. It is designed to be an addictive device. Now, as I said, I'm a huge fan of technology, so I don't think the answer is just to get rid of it in entirety. I think we're losing an incredible opportunity to reach people. And it's not just phones, it's TVs, it's it's stuff that will come in the future as well as now. And so I'm, I'm speaking into the, the direction the culture is going. There's so much about technology that is incredible power and incredible good, but also incredible power to distract and detract and to stop you from truly following Jesus. So what, what do we do? What do we do with this stuff? Well, I, I want to bring a scripture right now in Ephesians uh, 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 6, uh, verse 10 to 18. And, and, and this is what it says. But, 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 but you need to understand that, that there is a battle between um, you being formed into the image of the world and you being formed into the image of Christ. And here's, here's what's really important. The, the thoughts that become most dominant in your mind are the thoughts that will determine who you become. Let me say that again. The thoughts that become most dominant in your mind are the thoughts that will determine who you become. And if we create an environment 
where this is God. When we create an environment where we invite the voice of the world to uh, to talk and speak and form the way that we think and the way that we approach life, don't be surprised if we find ourselves finding it really hard to follow Jesus. But if we instead make the decision to make this book, the Word of God, the Bible, the teachings of Jesus, and allow that to be the thing that forms us, don't be surprised if you begin to experience the new levels of living, experience uh, the joy and the peace and the wonder of the things that Jesus has for us. So here, this is what it says in Ephesians 6 verse 10. It says, finally, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Don't be strong in the stuff of this world. Don't be strong in your understanding of current issues. It says, be strong in the Lord. There is a sense of deliberateness about what Paul is saying. saying, be strong, make the decision. And this is what I want us to do, church. I, I, as I said, I don't want us to go off and be hermits uh, somewhere in outer Siberia or Alaska or, or Wales. Uh, I don't know. Um, but, 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 but I want us to be deliberate about allowing God to shape and form us. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Well, that's good. It's not my might. It's his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Now, let me just in, interject and maybe just tangent for a moment because the last 18 months has been a crazy time and there is a lot of talk and a lot of stuff that is confusing that you might be hearing uh, on your local WhatsApp group. <laughs> and there is a lot of talk about conspiracy. There's a lot of talk about all the crazy stuff that is going on. And, and I just want to just bring you just maybe a perspective that I think this scripture really brings us and is helpful to us right now. Because here's the, here's the reality is I think it's very normal to have a lot of questions right now about the last 18 months. I think we should have questions. We should be asking about how certain information is being communicated. We should be asking about the, the manner in which things are uh, presented. Sometimes feels like things are manipulated or coerced or or just, it's, a weird, it's been a weird season and I have a lot of questions. I have a lot of questions about how data is presented. I have a lot of questions about um, just a lot of stuff. And I think a lot of people have a lot of questions. And I think the problem we have is normally when people have questions, we just go, oh, they're, they're just crazy conspiracy people but 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 I think the, the scripture actually explains something about what's actually been happening you see see it, it says in verse 12 for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against the rulers against the authorities against the cosmic powers over this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places so here's what you need to understand that, that for me as I read the scripture this is affirming to me that there is no global government conspiracy I don't think the, the governments of this world has come together to whatever that is to uh, to, to bring about havoc and harm um, in our world. I don't think that's what's happening. And, I, I, you know, that's up to you. But I don't think that's what's happening. What I do think is happening, though, is that we're not wrestling against the flesh and blood, the government. What we are wrestling against is the rulers, the authorities, the cosmic powers over this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Make no mistake, there are demonic powers at work in our world that are the spirit of this world that are on a mission to destroy humanity. They are on a mission to bring fear. And so what we need to do as Christians is we need to make sure we don't get caught up in, I don't know, just a little bit of extremism, a little bit of exciting conspiracy theory. We need to make sure we, we are wise and we are clever and just a little bit thoughtful and reflective about how we approach these things. But we also need to understand that there are spiritual forces at work and we need to hold both those things in tension together. It's okay to have questions. It's okay um, to, to, to question what's happening around the last 18 months. It's okay to be annoyed <laughs> as well. I think we should be annoyed to some extent about certain decisions that have been made and all of that jazz. But the purpose of this message is not to go into that. What I want you to, to understand today is that there are demonic powers at work. And these are the powers that are trying to conform us to the spirit of this world. And what, what does Paul say? He says, therefore, He's not just saying, oh, no, gosh, the, the, all these spiritual powers going on. What are we going to do? He's not overhyping it. He's just stating it as it is. This is how it is. We live in a world of spiritual realities, not just of flesh and blood. And he says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. So this is our key to navigate this tension in our world. He says, stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth. OK, so I, I just want to 
There's six things that Paul shares there, and I just want to unpack them all um, right now because I believe that there are demonic powers who are attacking certain things in our world right now, and we need to understand, as it says, the schemes of the devil, and we need to stand. So let's talk about truth, the belt of truth. Does this device determine what is true, or does this word determine what is true? Because here's something you really need to catch, that just because something is said a lot of times, does not make it true. Just because you hear something again and again and again and again, and that's the strategy of this world. It communicates things again and it changes language, it blurs boundaries, it messes with stuff and truth and questions and makes it all murky and weird, but we need to stand on truth. We need to have the belt of truth and we need to refuse to, to change what we believe about the truth, the word of God, what God says is what goes. And we need to make sure that we stand on truth. The spirit of deception is, is huge in our world and it's attached to agenda, it's attached to stuff and we need to have truth in our life. Jesus says that the truth will set us free. And when we've got our truth anchored in the wrong things, when we believe everything we read, on social media, when we are prepared to change our theology at the drop of a hat because it's now socially acceptable, we have to remember history. We have to remember that, that in certain points of history, everybody went along with the mainstream and it was a very bad idea. We have to stand on the truth of God's word. God's word goes. And one of the biggest lies right now is that truth is flexible. And so people will say to that, hey, well, your truth as a Christian, that's, that's for you, but it might not be for everyone else. I mean, this is the most ludicrous attack on truth by saying there is no truth. But of course, everybody's got their truth and they interpret the, the way they see it. But we need to understand that there is the truth. There is a universal, total truth that has the power to set people free. And we need to understand that this is actually good news because people are sick of the lies. People are sick of having nothing solid to build their lives upon. And Jesus Christ brings truth that we can anchor ourselves in an anchor. Our future says, having fastened on the belt of truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Um, gosh, righteousness is under attack in our world. And we need to choose to align ourselves to what God says about what is right, what is good. And we need to protect our minds. And we need to you know, when it comes to what we allow into our minds, there are certain things on TV and series that are wonderfully creative and fantastic storytelling, but we shouldn't be watching. We shouldn't be letting those things input that, 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 that draw us towards lust, that draw us towards greed. We, we should limit what we allow to get in, that we're not following people on social media who, who make us want to live a millionaire lifestyle, who, who make us desire things that, that, and, and, and feel discontent with our lives. We need to create boundaries so that our, our pursuit, our, we would hunger and thirst for the righteousness of God, not for the stuff of this world. You've got to change the inputs that are coming into your world. Otherwise, you're going to pollute the holiness that God has called you to be holy. And we, the church, are called to be holy. We need to be separate from this world. And so when people say, have you watched Game of Thrones? I haven't watched it because I know enough about Game of Thrones to know that it's going to pollute my soul. And I want to say, Christians, we need to get a bit more, we need to get a little bit more back Backbone, and we need to be okay about upsetting people. We need to be okay to be a little bit awkward at times, say, I don't want to watch that. I don't want to go there. I don't want to do that because I care more about being formed into the image of Christ than I do about being loved and liked by everyone around me. And that is a difficult thing for us as young people today. But you have to decide if you what you want most, if you want to please Jesus or if you want to please um, the world. Uh, the third uh, the thing is this, um, as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. Okay, I love this. I love this thought. It says, shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. So here's, here's what you need to understand. When you have peace in your life, and we're going to talk about how, how we do that. When you have peace, you have readiness to share the gospel. In other words, when you're not overly concerned with your own self, when, when you're at a level where you're okay, and um, you're going to find that you're going to have space in your life to witness. You're going to have space in your life to pray. You're going to have space in your life to encourage. You're going to have space in your life to be an influence in our world. And we need you to be an influence. We need the church and the Christians of this world to be an influence in our world. But when we don't have peace, all of our energy goes into finding peace. 
And here's, here's, here's what you need to understand about peace and anxiety is that peace is described in Galatians 5 as being a fruit of the Holy Spirit. In other words, it's, it's something that is a product of something else. And, and I've got to say that the same is true about anxiety, that anxiety is a fruit of stuff happening in your world. So peace and anxiety are fruit. And here's, here's where we get caught up with this, is that we know we need peace in our life because nobody can live without peace. And so we are searching for peace. We are looking to find it. We're looking everywhere. We're looking in people. We're looking in our devices. We're looking in situations. We're looking in comfort. And we can't find it anywhere. We find it for a moment, but it's fleeting. But it's because we don't understand that peace is a fruit. It's a fruit of the Holy Spirit. It's something that is produced in our life. And anxiety is a fruit. We don't often talk about anxiety like this, but, but let me just speak compassionately to you right now. If this is you and you are anxious and you have an, an anxiety problem that you feel anxious and it often, and it takes over, you panic, you, f- you freak out. This has a grip on your life. You feel anxious about the future. You feel anxious about social situations. You feel anxious about your job. You feel anxious about the relationship you're in. The, the, the anxiety is there. Here's what you need to understand is that you, you need to begin to change the inputs that are coming into your mind. You need to begin to allow your mind to be renewed because anxiety is a fruit. And, and sometimes we want to come to an altar call or we want to come to a moment. And sometimes we do. We do pray for, for healing. We pray for peace. But peace is a fruit. And, and, and sometimes I feel like Jesus isn't going to heal your anxiety. He's not going to do it because he actually needs you to put in some disciplines and, and put in some structure and some rhythm into your life so that you begin to bear the fruit of peace. And what does that look like? It, it's like turning your phone off when you sleep. (laughs) It's about turning your phone off. It's about having a detox once a week. Turn your phone off for 24 hours and just come away. It's about practicing the Sabbath. It's about, of course, the Word of God and community and dinner parties. Don't be surprised if isolation creates anxiety because anxiety is a product of isolation. It's a fruit of isolation. And so, come on church, we need to get wise. We need to understand that some of the things we are experiencing in our lives are fruit, products of the decisions we're making. And I don't say that to condemn you. I don't say that to make you feel bad, but I say that to bring truth into your life, to bring freedom, that you could be set free, that you could live a life that is full of peace. It is here, right here for you in Jesus Christ today. And the the fourth thing is the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. You know, faith in who God is. Faith comes by hearing the word of God, having a sense of who God is in your life. Faith over fear, hearing what God is saying above what the world is saying. How are we going to hear that? Well, we're going we're gonna to hold on. And here's, here's the thing. You, you don't have time to develop your theology on certain things. You don't have, you really are running out of time. You need to get on this faith thing now because there are darts coming your way. Present tense, we need to hold up the shield to protect us from the attack of the enemy. We're going to find that our thinking is going to be under attack. We're going to find that our morality is going to be under attack. Our courage is going to be under attack. Get the word of God into you and let faith rise. Hold up that shield of faith is going to protect you in your future. Uh, the, the, the fifth thing, I think it's the fifth thing. Uh, yeah, it's the fifth thing is the helmet of salvation. You know, I, I love that salvation is, is not just about kind of that one time moment that we receive Jesus into our heart, but it's about the deliverance of God. It's about the provision of God. It's about building your life in a way that you know that God has your back. No matter what happens, you are completely submitted and surrendered to him. And you know that he has you. And the enemy is trying to erode the helmet. The reason it's around your head is because it's the most important thing. <laughs> Because, because you need to know that God is for you. Can I speak that over you today? He is your savior. He is for you. He will fight for you. You can call on him. Jesus says you don't have because you don't ask. You can call on him. He is your help in time of need. Where does your help come from? Does it come from the mountains? No, it comes from the Lord. He is your salvation. And finally, the sixth thing is this, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. God. Here's what I love about this, because normally we stop there, but it actually goes on different verse, but same sentence says, which is the word of God praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication to that end. Keep alert with all perseverance. So here's what I love, guys, is that the sword of the spirit is the word of God. But the word of God is not something that is passive. It says that we are to pray at all times with the sword 
of the Spirit. We're supposed to pray the Word of God. The, the Word of God needs to be activated in your life. It's the only weapon that is described here. Everything else is defense. The shield is defense. The breastplate is defense. It's all defense. It's all, it's, it's all, uh, but, but the sword of the Spirit is the one thing that God gives us to take, take back, to fight in, in that, that space of prayer. And church, I want us to be a church of prayer. I want us to be a people who know the Word of God. You think, what do I pray? It's awkward. It's hard. You just need to read this book. <laughs> you just need to get your Bible out <laughs> instead of your phone. And I'm, I'm, look, guys, I, I, I got to tell you how much this is a personal um, preach for me. How personal this is for me because I'm constantly making decisions to push back on the spirit of this world. I work in digital marketing. I work in the in the digital space, and this stuff is trying to creep into my life. And I have to be so disciplined. Sometimes I miss things. Sometimes I miss important calls. But I have made a decision. I don't want to be discipled by this world. I want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Can I just pray for us as we close? Because I think some of us will have been challenged by today's message. You've been challenged today and you know that you need to get serious about following Jesus. There are some things in your life that you need to detox from. And in this whole conversation and series around minimalism, we've been talking about things we need to let go of. There are some things very practically you need to do. Turn your notifications off, unfollow some people, delete that app, share with a friend um, what that's like. Be accountable to someone, ask for prayer, ask for help. But there's some things that we just need to give to God right now and say, Jesus, I need your help here. Jesus, I want to follow you. I don't want to be a disciple of the world. God, challenge me and change me. Change the way that I think. So right now, I just want you to bring that to mind. Whatever that is, whatever has been challenging to you right now, I want you to bring that to Jesus. And I'm going to pray for you right now. And I'm going to pray that Holy Spirit would help you to detox from the stuff of this world, as particularly in the digital space, and to become a true disciple of Jesus Christ. God, we thank you for every person tuning in right now. We thank you for your love and your care for them. God, we thank you that you you want to disciple them, not for your benefit, but for their benefit. God, you are inviting us into a life of rest, a life of peace, a life of goodness, a life of fullness, a life of righteousness, a life of truth. God, we want those things. And I pray that every person right now, God, I pray that you'd give them the grace to let go. I pray that over every sense of condemnation, every sense of conviction in the heart, God, I thank you for your challenge of the Holy Spirit right now. But God, I thank you for your kindness, your loving rebuke, you discipline those that you love. Who can be a son or daughter who hasn't been disciplined? God, you love us. You care for us. And we choose right now to follow you, Jesus. Be our Lord. Over all of our future, we pray in the name of Jesus. Can you say amen at home? Gosh, this has been so good to share these moments. Can I just encourage you quickly um, to get connected into community? That's your step. Get connected into a dinner party. Head to the website, c3reflect.church slash dinner parties to find a dinner party or slash connect. Get connected. It's all on there on the website. Hit subscribe. Send us a message. We are cheering you on. But but one of the huge tactics of the enemy is to isolate you. It's impossible to live the Christian life on your own. The fruit of that is nothing good. But together, as we walk together and we learn together, this is God's design for, for the fruitfulness of your life. And I know that he's got an amazing future for you. I know that he loves you. So I'd love to invite you. Come on that journey with us as a church. That's that's all we're doing. Some of us aren't even Christians. Some of us don't even know what we believe yet. But we're on an imperfect journey of learning about Jesus and following him. And I want to invite you onto that amazing, amazing journey. God bless you. Have an amazing day. Day, have an amazing week and we'll see you very soon in from the cold from my broken road you welcome me in and you made me your own the heat of your fire melted my soul all of this time this is where i belong
was lost, now I'm found Like a glimmer of hope that will never let me go You bring peace to my soul But still you're by my side The world can never 